Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris. In this video in my series on sinusoids, I'm gonna talk about how my banjo, harmonics, and this dude over here, are all related with respect to wave mechanics. I'd like to start off by asking you to consider why does a banjo sound different from other instruments? Here we go. Before we talk about instruments, we'll have a look at waves and harmonics. Here we have a fundamental sinusoid on the top, a second sinusoid on the bottom, with a third sinusoid in the middle, which currently has an amplitude of zero. The bottom sinusoid is the sum of the top and the middle, in this case, resulting in a copy of the top sinusoid. Increasing the amplitude of the middle sinusoid, we see that its frequency is double that of the fundamental, creating the second harmonic of the fundamental. The resulting sinusoid on the bottom has a distinctive look. By time varying the phase of the second harmonic, we create a variety of different waveforms. What we can see is that the period of the fundamental repeats within the time varying waveform on the bottom. If we add a third sinusoid, in this case the fourth harmonic of the fundamental, we create a different waveform again. As we did with the second harmonic, time varying the fourth harmonic's phase creates a variety of new waveforms on the bottom. Again, with repeating period that of the fundamental. And now, if we phase shift all of the waveforms being added together, we arrive at a variety of new waveforms being generated on the bottom. If we've changed the amplitude of some of the harmonics, we arrive at different waveforms again. What this shows is that any repeating waveform can be decomposed into a series of sinusoids or harmonics of a fundamental waveform. This was discovered by Joseph Fourier and can best be understood when listening to musical instruments. Musical instruments sound different due to harmonics or overtones associated with each instrument. As an experiment, I recorded a single G note from my banjo, my guitar, and my synthesizer to compare with a pure G. In this case, 391.995 Hz, plotted here in the frequency domain. First, comparison with the banjo G. Here we can see the first, second, third, and fourth harmonics, also known as overtones. In between, we see the subharmonics. Next, the guitar G, where we see the first, second, third, and fourth harmonics with subharmonics. And finally, the synth G, with first, second, third, and fourth harmonics. These different harmonics and subharmonics gives each instrument their distinctive sound, and depend on whether the instrument is made of metal, wood, or plastic, as well as the shape of the instrument being used. It is curious, however, that only the banjo G note lines up with the pure G. That's probably because the banjo is awesome. To recap, any repeating waveform can be considered the sum of a set of sinusoids, those sinusoids being the harmonics of the fundamental repeating waveform. This was discovered by Joseph Fourier and helps describe the different sounds of musical instruments. That's because different amplitudes of the harmonics and different phases of those harmonics will produce a different repeating waveform. In the case of musical instruments, the amplitude and the phase of those harmonics or overtones are affected by the material that the instrument is made of, how the fundamental waveform is being generated, the shape of the instrument, whether the notes are being plucked or hammered or blown through or struck upon, or so on. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Even better, share my videos through your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris. Keep rocking.
Sinusoids, I'm gonna redo that one. Asking you to consider. I like this one. 